to everyone. My name is Paolo Trucillo and I am an assistant professor in uh, chemical design at the Department of Chemical Material Production Engineering at University of Naples, Federico II, Italy. Um, I will talk about uh, general definitions about drug carriers. I will talk about uh, supercritical fluid assisted processes for the production of liposomes. Uh, conventional methods uh, for the production of nanostructured lipid carriers, and then I will show what I'm working now on uh, foams uh, produced with, uh, uh, with, uh, with uh, a supercritical assisted uh, process, uh, helped by uh, the e extraction and other equipment of, uh, for the extraction of mat matter from of essential oils from natural uh, matter. Uh, as we can see, the um, uh, drug carriers are characterized by uh, four main functions, uh, the protection and transportation of drugs uh, in order to increase uh, their uh, bioavailability and also to reduce side effects uh, during uh, administration. That's why we have to, we know very well that we have to work inside uh, this uh, therapeutic window for each uh, uh, kind of drug is different, of course, and it is characterized by an efficacy limit and a toxicity limit. Our uh, drug release profile should be included uh, if possible inside this therapeutic window. So we have to be e efficient, so to be upper this efficacy limit, and, and we have and that we, we need that the drug concentration is lower than the toxicity limit in order not to have side effects. So it is a very uh, important uh, issue that we can assure by, use, uh, by the use of drug uh, carriers. As we know, we can uh, we we um, can talk and produce a lot of uh, uh, drug carriers uh, like uh, liposomes, uh, micro and nanoparticles, nanostructured lipid carriers, but also uh, patches in uh, terms of uh, hydrocolloids, hydrogels, but also foams and wafers. In this case, we will focus on liposomes that, as we know, and uh, also Professor Tuito said, uh, are uh, uh, spherical vesicles characterized by an inner aqueous core and a double lipidic layer. We can entrap hydrophobic drugs inside the double lipidic layer and the hydrophilic drugs inside the inner aqueous core. We use them because they are compatible with cellular membranes since they are made of phospholipids like our uh, uh, liposomes. And, um, the uh, delivery systems uh, can be natural or triggered by external stimuli. Natural just by uh, the administration of liposomes, they can fuse with the cell membrane and uh, just uh, release their drug content inside uh, the cell. Or uh, we can induce uh, the uh, opening of the cellular uh, barrier, the liposome barrier, uh, by the variation of temperature or pH or by activation due to ultrasound, uh, for example, over uh, uh, gold nanoparticles. We can also produce second generation liposomes uh, by the uh, covering uh, with the PEG polymer or, or with uh, peptides, and we can use those liposomes as Trojan horses uh, in order to not to be destroyed by the immunosystem. System. Uh, since I am a chemical engineer, uh, I had some uh, little expertise on the production uh, processes for these liposomes. As we know very well, there are uh, two main techniques that are uh, uh, traditional conventional techniques, the thin layer hydration, just the dissolution of phospholipid in an organic solvent, make the evaporation and then make the hydration with the uh, water and the hydrophilic compound. Ethanol injection is um, a bit different. We have a syringe in which uh, lipids uh, dissolved into organic solvent are dropwise uh, added to an aqueous solution. But these uh, methods suffer of many drawbacks. Uh, for example, the production at micrometric dimensions. This means that we have to add some post-processing steps uh, in order to uh, reduce dimensions or to increase a part of, or, or to increase uh, the encapsulation efficiency that generally is low. But what could be interesting is the, uh, the problem of high solvent residue. And we need to uh, add the post-processing step to eliminate this, uh, this uh, solvent. So in general, those methods may suffer without 
adding uh, post-processing steps of some uh, problems. That in a certain manner, uh, supercritical assisted process uh, processes, but also room processes uh, uh, like microfluidic channel have been developed. Uh, in this case, uh, we managed to, um, to work uh, one shot uh, for the particle side distribution uh, narrow reduction. And uh, uh, in a certain manner, we managed to overcome some of, of the conventional middle problems. In this uh, presentation, I will talk about uh, the supercritical assisted process that I have developed during uh, my first part of my academic career when I worked at the University of Salerno, that is uh, near my universe, actual working university. Uh, this process uh, is characterized by a carbon dioxide feeding line and a ethanol feeding line, which phospholipids are dissolved. These two uh, feeding lines are mixed together in an homogenizer, and then this uh, binary mixture of carbon dioxide and ethanol transport phospholipids inside a reactor, a main formation vessel, in which another uh, water uh, flow rate is uh, atomized. So this means that the water flow rate containing the hydrophilic drug is atomized into droplets in order to obtain uh, the pre-liposome. These uh, droplets of water containing drug are fast covered by phospholipids. And in this manner, we collect liposomes from the bottom or in a colloidal water suspension. The solvent residue is eliminated from the top together with the carbon dioxide. And then after expanding this mixture, we can eliminate ethanol, separate ethanol and carbon dioxide and provide also recirculation. This method is characterized by a fast coverage of water droplets uh, due to the fact that in supercritical conditions, uh, we are using a fluid that uh, has a similar property of density than liquid and similar property of, it, of viscosity of gases. So we are taking the good from gases and liquid in order to control particle size to entrap hydrophilic and lipophilic compounds to increase encapsulation efficiency up to 95% in a one-shot production process. This means that we uh, uh, worked on several industrial applications. First of all, we studied the flow rate uh, variation of the gas flow rate. So this means the ratio on mass basis of gas over liquid flow rate. We, we understood that by increasing uh, this uh, value, we obtained uh, uh, particle sites at nanometric level. So liposomes from 100 to 150 nanometers were produced with very narrow particle site distribution. We also confirmed this information uh, with the scanning electron microscope as we can see on the image on the uh, right. With the technology of nanoparticle tracking analysis, we managed to, so, to, to follow liposomes during their Brownian motion in, in this liquid. Uh, not only, but we also managed to count them. By increasing the concentration of lipid, we managed to cover more water droplets, creating a larger number of uh, liposomes, from 280 millions per milliliter to more than 3 billions per milliliter by doubling the lipid concentration. We studied the effect of uh, uh, layers, uh, for example, uh, on the left, by increasing uh, the uh, lipid concentration, we created more layers or phos of phospholipids around the inner core of liposomes. In this manner, we created uh, uh, more barriers, and this means a delayed drug release. What we wanted, because uh, it is what we wanted, because we wanted to, to tune drug release. Uh, in this case, it was just fluorescein. And uh, the same uh, observation, the same observation was obtained for cholesterol addition to the layer of liposomes. Uh, since by, with the addition of cholesterol, we compacted the, the structure, the surface of liposomes by reducing the delay, uh, uh, by increasing the delay for liposomes uh, uh, definition. Uh, we also uh, managed to uh, link peg layer over our liposomes. As we can see on the left, we have uh, liposomes without uh, the addition of a peg polymer. On the, on the right, we have peg on the surface. Also in this case, we compared the entrapment, the drug release of uh, an antimalarian compound uh, with the liposomes in the blue dots. Uh, we, re we reached the plateau at 50, after 15 hours. Using pegylated uh, layer, additional layer, we reached the plateau after 60 hours. 
The same purpose was obtained when we entrapped the libosomes in aerogels, alginate aerogels, because we wanted to create a, a, an additional barrier to those libosomes. So we just entrapped an antibiotic inside our libosomes, and then we entrapped the libosomes as well in our matrix of aerogel. In this manner, as uh, these uh, images uh, uh, can uh, assess, we managed to uh, obtain a delayed release in the first 20 hours due to the matrix overcome, and, uh, and then the, the release induced by uh, the, um, the uh, diffusion from liposomes. Applications. Uh, in collaboration with the Department of Medicine, we tried to um, put in contact our liposomes uh, with the human monocytes, ob <clears throat> obtaining this um, very interesting result in which 96% uh, uh, of the cells were uh, still alive and uh, managed to uptake our liposomes. Only 4% were uh, dead. Uh, but managed as well to entrap our libosomes. Second application, we induced near infrared um, drug release, uh, entrapping all of gold nanoparticles inside our libosomes together with another uh, drug uh, for another drug for human application. And uh, in uh, we studied the drug release, compared the black normal drug release from libosomes with the release activated by near infrared stimuli, as we can see. Uh, by this time, it was possible to activate the release and all the content up to 100% was uh, released. Another application was with Escherichia coli. Uh, so we put our uh, liposomes in contact with uh, uh, those uh, bacteria. Those liposomes were loaded with uh, amoxicillin, so an antibiotic. We managed to study what was the, uh, the right ratio among uh, drug and, uh, uh, and, and, uh, and phospholipid in order to reduce uh, the, the growth of bacteria. And also we studied what was the minimum uh, value of liposome concentration in order order to uh, destroy completely the population of uh, uh, bacteria. Our liposomes was also, were also used for the encapsulation of antioxidant compound. In this case, it was eogenol, a uh, uh, molecule that is amphoteric. So we, it was possible to uh, entrap it in the inner core of liposomes, but also in the lipidic layer. Uh, and uh, since this uh, eogenol is uh, sensitive to light, oxygen, and temperature variation, we wanted to study the uh, inhibition reduction of its uh, antioxidant power. We managed to, to uh, obtain not only nanometric dimensions uh, as this uh, image uh, assesses, but also uh, a, a negligible reduction of the inhib inhibition of uh, the antioxidant uh, activity. Then we changed completely the kind of application of our uh, supercritical assisted process for liposomes formation. We wanted just to uh, find a good way to uh, fix and to put the dye on later for uh, later treatment for different kind of application. And we managed to, to give simultaneously the fattening um, uh, step, but also the, uh, the, the, the fixing of the dye on the upper and down surface of later. As you can see from the same images, the up and the down surface of later are completely different. So it is not easy to, uh, to, to, uh, to give and deliver dye on these surfaces. Uh, by using our processes, our nanometric liposomes managed to uh, obtain a high resistance of color intensity and a reduced coloration uh, time. Lutein, final application that I'm going to show you, is uh, an, um, uh, an ocular delivery, a molecule for ocular delivery. Um, as we can see with our process, we introduced um, another uh, activity of uh, uh, modeling of this drug release uh, of lutein from uh, our liposomes. Uh, and as we can see, if we produced our liposomes at 35 degrees centigrade, we best fitted this curve. But by increasing the, the temperature, maybe those liposomes had a different behavior uh, since uh, they were characterized probably by a more open uh, structure and so a faster release. 
So let's come to another part of this presentation in, in which I will show you uh, that I also use the conventional methods for the production of complex carriers. In this case, we are talking about nanostructured lipidic carriers. Uh, those carriers uh, were characterized by the simultaneous encapsul encapsulation of the coenzyme Q10 and the vitamin B2. In this case, we managed to um, obtain spherical particles, but we studied the inner uh, substrate of these particles. In particular, it seems sorry, that uh, those uh, Q10 coenzyme built a sort of pillars on which small nanoparticles uh, grabbed on it. So it was very easy, very interesting to, to study this, this kind of uh, nanostructured carriers that also had uh, mean sites in this case, since we used the a, a, a complex carrier and also a conventional method, the mean size of 10 microns, more or less. But an encapsulation efficiency from 92 to 99 uh, percent. Now I'm working on a complex uh, process for the production of complex carriers. Uh, in, in particular, I'm working with this high pressure system uh, for the supercritical foaming. Of, uh, uh, of these carriers. In particular, uh, this process uh, is characterized by uh, a reactor that works in a semi-batch condition. Uh, and uh, um, the, uh, it works in this manner. We have, uh, just for exa an example, polycarbon laton, that is biocompatible uh, polymer, uh, that uh, is uh, first pressurized by a blowing agent, that in this case uh, is carbon dioxide in supercritical conditions, and in the second step, uh, there is the sorption of this gas inside the polymer until uh, reaching an equilibrium step, so a saturation at fixed pressure and temperature conditions. After a defined step uh, time, sorry, a defined time of sorption, the gas is released. So there is this pressure re released. And what happens that the structure has increased its volume and uh, um, reducing the density, of course, and uh, creating some voids inside our uh, polymer. So a foam has, uh, has born. Uh, those uh, voids uh, then grow and stabilize in a precise and, uh, manner. Those are just some preliminary examples. Uh, we have uh, um, made the solutions of uh, polycaprolacton in acetone. Uh, we uh, just created the solution. We optimized also the, uh, the cooling at air conditions, at uh, room conditions. And then this cylinder that was dried at room conditions was, uh, um, um, was put inside our high pressure reactor and it was foamed at 100 bar, four degrees centigrade for nine minutes of sorption. And depending on the kind of geometry that we um, fixed, of course, we may have this kind of structure. So from cylinder, round cylinder to this parallelepiped or to this cubic structure. And this is from hard, to, um, a, a passage from hard to soft matter that of course can contain in some drugs. Indeed, uh, now we are studying uh, a way to entrap uh, an antibiotic, uh, diclofenac, and uh, an extract from uh, a carcade uh, plant inside our um, soft matter uh, uh, forms. And so we want to optimize also the voids, as you can see from these uh, uh, preliminary SEM uh, images. And how can we obtain uh, the, uh, we are now talking about the last part of this uh, presentation, how we can ob obtain uh, information and uh, essential oils or molecules to entrap in our drug carrier, we can use extraction process. So we can couple the extraction process with our uh, high pressure or conventional methods for the production of drug carriers. Uh, we just uh, use diffusion of gas, solubilization of uh, essential oil, and then counter diffusion of gases. Conventional methods for the extraction are, uh, for example, the maceration or the percolation. And uh, this consists in the extraction of active principles from this natural matter that can be very different. We need uh, very long contact times, and we also need uh, to work at room pressure and temperature, for example. Uh, we have some stability, but the disadvantages are that uh, we uh, sometimes reach a partial extraction, and sometimes, not for all the process, but we can reach a degradation of active principles that we want to entrap in our carriers. 
So, uh, for example, it is possible to use uh, uh, supercritical assisted processes uh, that are characterized by carbon dioxide in supercritical conditions that uh, alone or together with others, over, other co-solvents can uh, extract essential oils and then can be, they can be uh, expand, expanded in order to collect them. However, uh, in these cases, we can have also woxes in our processes. So uh, we can up, upgrade this process with fractional separation. We first make a, a, a first elimination of woxes, and then with uh, intermediate expansion, we can selectivity, selectively eliminate uh, as, uh, separate essential oils. However, those processes are not always versatile. That's why uh, we have developed in our uh, university at the Department of uh, uh, Chemical Sciences, uh, the Navillo extractor, that is a very versatile process uh, that uh, reduces significantly the time of extraction uh, from natural matter. We managed to produce many liquors that are very famous in our land in Italy, limoncello and mandarin in just two hours. Mirtus in 36 hours, but we also did something else, uh, broccoli cooking at, uh, in half an hour, but also the cleaning of metal elements in not more than half an hour. And finally, our uh, studied application also is a wild uh, wine oldening in uh, a time from four to eight hours. So Navigio Extractor is the commercial name of the patented process named, uh, that goes also on, under the name of rapid solid liquid dynamic extraction that works at low pressure. And uh, this means uh, that uh, we have uh, some liquid that is able to, ex to um, extract natural matter at uh, mild uh, pressures from five to 10 uh, bars. The advantages are the full extraction to saturation, the preservation of active principles because we work at room temperature and low extraction times, as I said. The functioning is just made in this, uh, schematized in this manner. We have the loading step, uh, imagine these two syringes that uh, in, with the compression step uh, force the liquid to, uh, to, to go inside the natural matter. A static phase uh, obliges the, the, the natural matter to release their content, uh, content of essential oils. And then the dynamic phase um, uh, recalls in a certain manner uh, this um, this liquid by alternation of, uh, uh, of this cyclic uh, static and dynamic phase, we can reach equilibrium conditions and then we can unload our uh, liquid uh, containing the uh, concentrated uh, essential oils. Uh, this process has been uh, uh, is versatile, as I said, but also scalable to industrial level. That's why we first created a lab scale process from the half liter to two liters, uh, working uh, batches. Uh, then the pilot scale, forty liters working batches, and then the industrial scale, two hundred uh, liters. Some uh, results before ending my presentation. Uh, Limoncello was produced in two hours and uh, with conventional methods, it, it takes uh, 15 days. Mirtus liqueur is uh, uh, made in 36 hours instead of 20 days. And of course the test uh, is, uh, is uh, the same. And we also extracted the natural dyes uh, from uh, leaves, but also uh, decaffeinization in water with a great successful extraction efficiency. So I would like to thank you for.